Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 21st DECON seminar. It's my pleasure today to welcome Dr. Sofia Gensle of the Technische University of Ilmeno. Sofia is a postdoctoral research fellow at the Department of Economic Sciences and Media, and her research focuses on the topics of social media stardom, attention economics, and competition in the streaming sector. She's a member um, of, among others, the Association for Cultural Economics International. And today she will present on the topic of income and nudity on the internet, attention economics of Instagram stars. And we'll have approximately 40 minutes for the presentation, followed up by some questions. Thank you, Sofia, for being here. And, and the, floors, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Satya. Um, welcome everyone and thank you so much for the interest in my research. Thank you so much for the invitation. I'm very happy to present my paper. Um, you already heard the title and it's actually based on a discussion paper with a similar yet different title, Attention Economics of Instagram Stars, Hashtag InstaFame and Sex Cells. And since the paper changed a lot and the methodology changed a lot, I thought it's time for a new name. And um, I'm not sure if that's the final title, but um, I want to present it today in this version to you. And let's get right into it and um, talk about the introduction and what are social media stars really? What am I talking about? They're also called influencers or creators, and they basically gain popularity on platforms like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Switch, and so on. So social media pages where they generate their own um, content and get famous with their own content. And I brought some examples just to show you the numbers and the reach of those people. Um, one of the most um, famous social media or Instagram stars is Lele Pons with um, more than 40 million uh, followers. And if you want to advertise um, with her, so if you want to have an advertised post on her Instagram page, that will cost you more than 140,000 US dollars per post. And on the right hand side, you can see Sack King. And if you want to have him do magic for you, that would be more than uh, 80,000 US dollars per post. So you can see those stars have a very far reach and that's why they gain economic and social and cultural importance. And that is also one of the um, motivations to really research uh, what is happening on those platforms and research the superstar phenomenon on those platforms. Um, this paper builds on the theoretical framework and theory of economics of superstars. There are three seminal papers by Rosen, Adler and McDonald from the 1980s. And there are a lot of empirical papers trying to find or finding evidence um, to that, those theories in music, in sports, in film and arts. And also in social media, there's one paper by Oliver Butinsky and me on YouTube stars, and one paper from Jung and Nuesch also on YouTube stars. And now I'm focusing on Instagram stars in this paper, combining um, the superstar theory with attention economics, so theory on scarce attention in markets. And in our first empirical papers on that subject, check Oliver Psinski and me wrote about um, audience building, which basically consists of two effects happening simultaneously, um, but can be differentiated analytically. So the first one would be audience attraction. So the first stimulus trying to um, catch the first attention of consumers, the first eye catcher to grasp attention. And then the second one is audience maintenance. So you really want to maintain that intention by basically building consumption capital, so-called consumption capital. And there are different ways to build consumption capital. 
So the first one is the consumption of uh, content itself, uh, what you consume, you learn about it, you build specific knowledge about that. And um, you basically learn about that star, for example, if you watch YouTube videos, if you look at the um, social media pages and sc scroll through the pages, you learn about that star and you build specific knowledge and you can derive utility by cons consuming that. And you can also increase your future utility because you know more about the subject, you know more about the person, so you increase future utility by building that consumption capital. That's the um, main idea. And um, also there are uh, commonality effects or gossip effects. If you communicate about it, um, you can derive utility from talking to your friends and family about the content, sharing content, and actually learn even more uh, about that person. Um, and and um, talk about it. And the last one is media coverage. So the availability of information, how much information is available, um, can is, is a lot of information available on that person. You can learn a lot. Um, you can um, build specific knowledge, decrease, uh, increase utility um, from the different media where you can get information. And um, so both parts, um, have scars information, so to say, as a basis. That while the second part is pretty well researched, especially when it comes to um, positive network externalities, this part is very well researched within the um, superstar theory and the superstar um, uh, papers, empirical papers. But the first one really isn't that well researched. And that's why I, what I try to operationalize in this um, paper, having a proxy for that audience attraction, this initial stimulus, and that proxy um, here would be uh, body exposure. So you have body exposure and does that actually um, catch a people's attention is that actually a positive um, uh, for your success and um, do you gain attention with that um, for the the lower part so for audience maintenance um, i also have variables in my set so the numbers of posts like how much can you actually consume of that person, how much content is available, um, then communication and commonality effect, the followers, the likes, um, post engagement, something like that. And the last one is media coverage, so the availability of information, um, so-called multi-homing, on how many chain channels do the social media stars supply their content, so what channels do they have next to Instagram, maybe YouTube, maybe website, and so on. And then the concentration of locations of the audience um, in how many locations is the audience, uh, how many languages do they speak, how is the concentration here? And the last one is the constant and, and some more concentration figures also of, on interest and so on. To actually answer the following research questions, does body exposure drive income success on Instagram? And is there a difference between male and female content in this regard? And since it is a empirical paper, I transformed it or translated it into no hypotheses. Body exposure does not significantly influence income. And the second one, gender does not significantly change the effect of body exposure on income. So um, we will see if we can reject the two hypotheses in the empirical analysis. And let's get to the empirics and um, the sampling. So I have 500 Instagram stars. The data is from hapsi.com, which is an agency to find suitable stars for marketing reasons. So if you are, if you want to advertise your product or your service with an uh, Instagram star, you can contact those agencies and um, find a suitable star for your products. They have a lot of information uh, on these stars. And I sampled only those with email addresses stated on Instagram. There are a lot of other stars on Instagram like Ronaldo and so on. And um, actually those ones really stating their email address, they want to be contacted on the platform. They have business interest on the platform. That's why I sampled only those um, out of five very popular 
um, platforms, fashion, uh, categories, fashion, fitness, food, music, and photo and art. And um, I have panel data. It's approximately every 10 days since Hepsi also needed to refresh the data. And it's from January to June 2020. In the end, after coding, um, it was roughly above 50% uh, female content and male content um, roughly above 20. We'll see um, when I come to the coding what that is about. And um, the dependent variable. So what is the dependent variable and the proxy for income um, we want to see here? And I think I need to explain a little bit about the system of Instagram. Instagram is owned by uh, Meta or Facebook and um, is basically a social media page for picture content, also short videos by now. And you can see Instagram in the middle, we have the consumers um, in the lower part and the Instagram stars up here. They provide the con uh, content, the consumers consume that and pay with attention and their data. And then there's two parts of advertisers. There are those advertisers here and they directly pay Instagram to um, put their advertising within the chronic of consumers or within the platform. And um, those are not the advertisers and the payment I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is advertisers, number one, um, up here on the left. They pay directly to the Instagram stars for ad services, for the attention, for their products, their services, whatever they want to um, advertise um, or have the Instagram stars promote. And that's actually a very good proxy for income on Instagram. In the paper, I have a detailed list on how you can earn money on different social media services. Um, and on Instagram, since they don't get directly paid by the platform, it's a very good proxy to use those um, advertising um, numbers. And the dependent variable in the end is price per picture. And you can see that the mean is roughly above 16.5 thousand um, US dollars. That's all in US dollars per pictures. So it's um, a lot of money those stars generate within um, one uh, with one picture. But you can also see that it varies a lot between the different um, be between the different stars. Coming to the independent variables and the first or the most important ones in the beginning, and those are also the ones which needed to be coded. So the level of body exposure, how much body exposure is present within the pictures in the sample, and um, there's a lot of a theoretical background and classification of nudity and sexual appeal available. Actually, that's a meta study. So if you're interested, that would be um, a meta study looking into the different parts. And I basically focus on partially glad since there are no new pictures allowed on Instagram according to the community guidelines. And I have 12 pictures per account I can code with each um, one or zero. So if 50% or more naked skin is shown in the picture, that's coded as a one. Um, also coded as a one is 50% or more a focus on primary sexual characteristics. So even if it's covered, but you have basically just breasts in the build, uh, in the picture or something, then it's still coded as a one. Um, and in the end, that gives me a variable uh, varying from zero, so there's no body exposure on the account, to 12, um, which is all of the pictures are nude pictures or um, show a lot of body exposure on the account. Um, the, that variable in the end is time invariant, um, since it's very extensive work to code. Um, we had two people coding um, and repeating the process to ensure intercoder reliability. So there's um, it's you no know, differences between the coders and internal consistency. So you look at it at a, late, a later point in time and um, you um, reevaluate um, your results. And 
since that's invariant, I checked um, the accounts later on again to see if um, those, um, those measurements were still accurate and um, rechecking the accounts actually one year later, you can see that the accounts are highly specialized. It's basically superstars having a specific target group, being very um, specialized in their way of communicating to their fan base. So it's um, not depend, the nude content, so to say, doesn't depend on a season, but it's really specialized in, if I have a lot of nude content in summer, I also have that in winter. And if I don't post any nude content, um, I will not post it in summer or winter, um, maybe if I specialize in something else. And that's what we get to um, with the next slide, actually the coding of the type of content, the gender. Um, there's a differentiation between sex, so the biology or the physiology, and gender, so the sexual identity or social percep perception of a person. Of course, I can't, can't say anything about the, um, the sexual identity of a person, how a person feels. I can only say this person is read as female or male, so the created impression in the end is the gender I can actually observe. And that's what I do for um, red as male, female, um, and so on in the last 12 pictures. And that's the and so on here. So it's five variables. Um, one is female, clearly female features, one or more women. Male would be clearly male features, one or more men. Mixed uh, if um, clearly male and female, um, but it's more than more than one picture. Uh, more, more, sorry, what what more than one person in the picture? <laughs> and ambivalent would be there are sexual characteristics recognizable, but not clearly attributable to men or women, and actually have one transvestite in the sample, and that um, accounts for that, for example. And no identification is basically um, no characteristics are visible, so you don't see um, any gender um, that might also include pets or um, landscapes and so on. So there is no human visible or um, no sexual characteristics at all. And so I have a number of pictures per account for all variables separately. That means for one account, it could be five female, five male and 12, no identification. And that's the last 12 pictures coded. There are some more independent variables in the set. So um, the posting behavior, post frequency, number of posts, percentage of branded posts they're using, um, then some uh, popularity indicators, followers, post engagement, likes, um, and you can see that uh, the majority or the mean uh, of followers is at um, 6.5 million followers. So they are quite popular, these accounts. It is um, the top ones within their categories. And I have further control. So the concentration of the location, um, the language of the um, demand side. So that's all demand, demand, um, concentration of location. Where are they within the world? What, what languages do they speak? Uh, what interests do they have? And how concentrated are those interests? And um, I also control for the category, of course, where the, um, the stars were sampled in. So let's look at some first results, just descriptive ones. And uh, let's just look at the top 20 overall according to the mean price per picture. So the top 20 within the sample, and we can see we have uh, no food account um, within the top 20, but seven fashion accounts, five fitness accounts, seven music accounts, and one uh, photo account or photo and arts. Um, when we look at the percentage of content, it's um, roughly above 50% female content, 19% male content within the top 20, 24% um, uh, mixed. No ambivalent ones um, and no identification is 4%. And what is already very interesting is that we have a body exposure of 37% 
um, within those top 20. So it's not a lot. Uh, I'd say it's not more than 50% or you have to be naked to be popular, so to say, um, or um, successful in terms of price per picture. Um, but there's also a minimum of zero um, and a maximum of 100. So all 12 pictures on that account um, are uh, naked pictures. So it varies a lot. And we can see that uh, very popular ones have high body exposure, but you can also be successful without body exposure, exposure within that sample. Some more descriptives and maybe getting to know the data and getting some ideas. Um, I try to find differences between female and male content, um, just checking um, if there's a difference for those accounts, which actually focus on primarily female or primarily male content. So I um, actually had a dummy, if there's 50% or more female or male content on that account, um, so there's a clear focus of that account on actually female or male content, sorry here, um, and that excludes mixed accounts, uh, which have female male uh, versions or non humans accounts um, and also non focus so some female some male some mix some no identification and that leaves 30 uh, 382 influences in the sample, which I can compare. And um, it's actually already interesting small results from descriptives to seeing that body exposure is significantly lower for male content or significantly higher for female cont uh, content um, on average. The post frequency is not significantly different. I can see that um, accounts with female content post a little bit more than accounts with uh, primarily male content, but it's not significantly mere. Uh, more the price per picture and that was really surprising for me in the beginning uh, working this topic is significantly higher for male content um, that was really surprising um, since Instagram seems to be a very female dominated platform um, at least from my kind of view or bubble and um, if you take the weekly revenue though so if you um, just have the post frequency and the price per picture, um, there is no significant difference. So what we can um, learn from that is that um, accounts with female, primarily female content, post a little bit more than those with primarily male content, um, but have less uh, money per picture and higher body exposure. So um, in the end, they end up, so to say, with a similar uh, revenue, but they have to post a little bit more and um, show more body exposure within their accounts. But we don't want to stop here um, getting into the analytical analysis and some regression analysis. I'm using a hybrid model here, which is basically a mixture between fixed effects and random effects model. I'm just explaining um, the small stuff in the beginning. So I is per account and T is the time of observation. So the occasions, and we have two different sets of variables within um, this regression model. So we have the ones which vary between occasions and within classes, you can see the I and T here. And that's basically the ones which vary also for each account. So it's different kinds of followers, they're growing uh, over time and uh, posts and so on, posting behaviors that varies um, within the cluster, so within the accounts. And then there's time invariant uh, ones. So that's just um, the I here, which varies only between the clusters. Um, so gender, for example, the category and um, body exposure was also just coded once. So um, those are stable over time. And um, then we have the different errors here, uh, one for the one between clusters and one for the within clusters. And that's up here. And um, basically the hybrid model is used um, and to have within effects in a random effects model by decomposing a between and a cluster component. 
And translated is basically that for those ones, you use random effects, which are um, invariant. And for those ones, you demean the whole thing and you use a fixed effects model in the end for those who vary, uh, which vary over time. And that's what we want in the end, because we want to see the differences across entities. So the differences in body exposure, how much body exposure has influence on the dependent variable of income. So does the difference in body exposure make a difference in income? And that's where we get to the results. I calculated different models to see robustness. Um, the dependent variable here is K picture price. So the picture price calculated in thousands um, since it's very high numbers. And then I included different sets of independent variables starting with uh, popularity controls of followers um, included in the first model. And then the second one, I swap that because they're highly correlated, so I don't put them into one regression. Um, I swap that for likes. And what we can see here, that's basically the lower part of the table. I'm sorry, so the table's very long. It doesn't end here. There's a dot, dot, dot. And on the next slide, you have the lower part of that um, model. And we can see that the explanatory power of the model increases a lot um, with adding the likes um, into the model. So that's why I stick to the likes within model three and four also. Just adding some more controls, um, the percentage of branded posts and also the demand side um, controls here in the last uh, model. You can see the observations drop a little because um, I have missings for the branded posts and I have missings for the um, for the demand side, not all of them are given within the data set. So that's why observations drop a little bit. Um, and what we can see here, and I think that is um, most important, is that body exposure is positive and significant within all um, models or over all models. And I also did um, a lot of robustness checks with other models. If you're interested, I have the um, random effects, fixed effects model compared with the hybrid ones, a log log model, just to see if body exposure is really robust over all these estimates. And um, it is. So that's why in the end, I want to say, um, or we can state that a body exposure does not significantly influence income. We can reject the null hypothesis um, since we see that body exposure is positively significant within all estimates. For the second one, however, gender does not significantly change the effect of body exposure on income. Uh, first of all, let's look at the gender effects um, added here. I added female and male within um, the regressions. And we can see that for the first models, um, it's negative significant for female, it's negatively significant for male, so it might have negative effects, but those are not at all stable. And also for female, as soon as I add the demand side um, um, aspect, uh, it drops um, significance. So I can't really say anything um, yeah, consistent about gender effects on um, the price for picture. And that's why I um, started with interaction terms. And here it's basically based on the last um, model um, before I added the um, interaction terms and um, one is the gender ratio interaction, one is female interaction, one is male interaction. And the gender ratio is calculated as number of female pictures divided by number of male pictures plus number of female pictures. And that kind of gives you um, a, a ratio um, with values between zero and one, with zero being uh, um, mostly uh, male content and female being at one. So arranging from male to female from zero to one. <clears throat> and um, well, the interaction terms itself 
they are down here. They don't um, really give any idea um, since they're not significant. Um, um, but as you know, that usually within interaction terms and within the models, we interpret the marginal effects of those interaction terms. And I have the table with me, but I thought that the figure is actually um, easier to understand and uh, more intuitive to understand. What you can see here, that would be um, only male content, that would be only female content. And for accounts with more than 50% female content, body exposure has a significantly positive effect. So here we can't really say anything about the effect of body exposure. It can be negative, it can be positive. So for accounts with primarily male content, um, body exposure can have a very positive effect, um, but it can also have a negative effect and it varies a lot and it's basically insignificant. But what we can say is uh, if the account posts a lot of female content, then body exposure gets positive here and has a positive effect. Now, can we actually reject the null hypothesis gender does not significantly change the effect of body exposure on income? Um, I'm very careful because we don't have um, effects on all types of gender, male, female, and diverse. We definitely do not have enough information, or I do not have enough information uh, on diverse, since it's just not enough data. Um, there is no significant uh, results for male. We can only say something about female. So um, in the end, I'm very careful with rejecting the uh, null hypothesis, but there is some evidence um, for female accounts. And that's where I get to the conclusion, does body exposure drive income success on Instagram? We saw within the descriptives that it is not exclusively necessary for top positions, but still very common among top positions to have nude pictures. Um, and we saw all over the, um, um, the sample within the regression that body exposure is significantly positive for the whole sample. Um, is there a difference between male and female content in this regard? Well, just sampling the top accounts per category and coding those, I found that um, more than 50% is female content. So it seems that female content is very popular um, and among the, the top accounts. Then the price for male content was significantly higher uh, while uh, female accounts um, pose significantly more body exposure. Um, within the regressions, we saw no significant effect of female or male, or no conclusive significant effect of female or male content on price per picture. Um, but the interaction terms show that for accounts with a lot of female content, body exposure has a significantly positive effect. And in the end, of that analysis, I was wondering, do women need to invest more in terms of they post a little bit more and they show more body exposure um, to earn the same amount of money? And that is really a question. Do we have a gender pay gap in social media? The paper doesn't answer that, but it kind of raises the question. And that's where we definitely need more research in that field and um, in income effects or difference in income, um, since the results here can only be interpreted very carefully and used as a first indicator. And we need more research on the differences um, in income. And it would be really interesting to see in a sample where you have um, maybe more uh, male content. There's also a study by Richard et al. Um, indicating that Instagram favors nude content. So the algorithm actually favors nude content and that might lead to a whole lot of biases. Um, so that is uh, definitely interesting to see and um, uh, uh, across all types of content. And um, what I also need to say as a limitation, there are of course other sources of revenue and maybe especially for nudity, if you think about OnlyFans, so um, the 
there might be other sources than Instagram and advertising on Instagram uh, for those accounts. And I don't do any classification of sexual appeals. So I um, don't, I think that's highly subjective to say if something is sexually arousing or not. Um, and that's why it's very hard to code. But of course, it would make a big difference is if someone is just in sports gowns or uh, wearing lingerie or something. Um, so I don't do any um, coding on that one. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to your questions and the discussion. And thank you so much for your attention. Uh, so uh, please, uh, Olga, go ahead. Uh, you have to unmute. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Hi. 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 Nice to see you. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. I wanted to ask uh, about your conceptual model. So in current conceptual model, the um, uh, body exposure sort of drive, would drive the price for the content that the Instagrammer gets. But I was wondering, uh, so to me, the more natural setting would be where body exposure of an Instagrammer drives audience reactions, for example, likes. And then uh, based on uh, likes or based on exp user engagement that the Instagrammer may uh, get, the price is determined yeah? so by uh, advertisers, for example. So I was wondering, have you considered, and maybe that would be interesting to look at the framework where um, you look at body exposure mediated, uh, which affects likes, uh, so, so to which extent basically likes mediate the effect of body exposure on the price, yeah? to see what are the sources. Yeah? That I think would, have you looked at it maybe? Yeah, yeah, I did, I did. I did look at it. Um... That was, uh, yeah, I, I um, considered that before and it's actually a very valid question and maybe I should put that in the paper too, um, because um, just looking at the correlations and also um, looking at, I, I tried some um, structural equation modeling and um, going into the direction of um, mediators and um, um, th th that didn't seem to be the case. So. Um, mm. I, I tried some models, um, but it it is not the case that um, body exposure, so to say, um, drives popularity and popularity drives the price. That uh, doesn't seem to be the case. Wow, because it's impressive. It depends on demand. So whether um, sort of body exposure affects prices via demand side, via, via attention side or via advertiser yes. side. And apparently what your results suggest that uh, it is due to advertiser. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah, that's it's, really, yeah, I, I should put that mm -hmm. in the in the paper because uh, I was wondering the same thing. And that's what also the whole literature on uh, body exposure or, um, yeah, on, on nudity uh, um, in, in marketing is based on because either you say, okay, that's really driving a lot of attention and it's very positive, or also uh, advertisers don't want to be included within too much nakedness and um, don't want to be associated with uh, nudity. And that can also have negative effects. So the results within uh, former studies in marketing are very mixed. And um, what you say is very true. So if it's not a mediator, it seems to be a fact that advertisers um, like that, yeah. Then maybe it's, it makes sense to highlight it in the paper that yeah. it's actually yeah. the supply side of advertising sort of drives the, mm -hmm. um, the effect. That's very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, do we have further questions? I have some, but I prefer to you know, wait. Okay, uh, if I may, we just, uh, I've been wondering as well, but this, this you probably talked about it before I uh, arrived. Uh, uh, I've seen like in, in the control variables that you included about likes, there were two types of the like variable. Could you say? Oh yeah, that's basically, yeah. Um, shall I share the slides again or? 
Well, it's basically the, the model. So um, I should have talked about that maybe. You always have, if you use that hybrid model, you have to have the demeaned version and the mean version. Um, so it calculates the fixed effects of the likes. And that's why it's two times within the independent sets, but it's basically due to the hybrid model. So all the um, variables which uh, vary over time, they're in there twice within the table because it's the demeaned version and it's the mean version to calculate the fixed effects uh, model for those variables. Yeah. Okay, see, I see, thanks. Uh, so I wanted to ask, because you say that the, like the structure model where there would be first uh, uh, exposure affecting likes and then income, it doesn't really uh, work that well. Yeah, no, I mean, it doesn't yeah. explain. But uh, is there any relationship like between body exposure and likes in the first place? Yeah, I can. Well, now, now I'm just wait a second. Yes, I've Here been wondering that perhaps a different approach to this could be if you, uh, when you have these uh, likes variables, perhaps it would be possible to include like. like uh, I don't have or... the correlation between likes and body exposure. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have the other yeah. correlations with me, but I don't have body exposure and likes. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, no. the worries. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like so I've been wondering if it would be possible, for example, to include uh, separately uh, likes for posts with body exposure and likes for posts without body exposure. Because, uh, as I understand, mm -hmm. you have it coded separately, mm -hmm. yeah. and in a yeah. way, this could uh, this would kind of distinguish between. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's any effect that this yeah, is confounded, yeah. the likes for the body exposure, maybe this would allow to sort of get uh, this yeah. overall mm -hmm. quality or something separately. I yeah. know, it's just an idea. Yeah, it's another idea of the, 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 so to say, the problem that body exposure might drive popularity and that might drive the price. Um, and I didn't find anything about the mediation, but it, it would be interesting just to see, yeah, just to calculate. Uh, the relation between likes and body exposure. But yeah, mm -hmm. cool. Okay, do we have other questions? Yeah, I, I have one question. Most probably it's something that you mentioned, mentioned and I lost it somewhere, but when you have different categories of the accounts like fitness and food and all of all of that then you have different benchmarks for each one in in terms of like body exposure for example for fitness it would be much higher and uh i wondered how you how you tackled that um, that's basically within the fixed effects model okay. you control with the uh, categories so you control for the categories and um but I still, I think it's it's very uh, valid question to ask about the categories because the effects might differ between the categories. And um, I actually calculated everything within each category too to see if the effects are different, if there are um, different significant effects within the categories. And um, that was all not very conclusive. There seemed to be not the biggest effects between the categories. And I was really wondering about that too, but um, it, it, it doesn't, uh, body exposure is also um, somehow good in food than it is in fitness. So um, yeah. That's, um, but yeah, I, I should definitely, I, I think I have it in the paper, but I should maybe highlight that one too. And also for the, um, yeah, for the talk, but that's control for within the fixed effects. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I, I see that that's interesting that it does not uh, vary between yeah, the categories, yeah. but, and also one thing that I was wondering about is the, um, the scale for body exposure, because you have a dummy variable zero one for that, right? Or, okay. So no, no, I lost no, something yeah. on the way <laughs> again. Yeah, that's, um, that's the one from zero to 12. Okay. So it's, and it's for zero each pictures picture. or 12 okay. pictures. Yeah. It's, okay. it's not zero one. So to say, but it varies, it's, it's ordered basically. Okay. So, so it's pictures to 12 pictures. 
above and below 50% for each picture, and then you sum it up, up to 12 so that you have a scale. Yeah, it's a, it's a scale for each picture, so to say. So if zero pictures are nude pictures, then it's a zero. Okay. And if all of them are naked, I can basically show you one of the codings. Okay. Um, it's actually also interesting just to see one of the... Can you see that now? Yes, yes, yeah? okay. So that would be the male version, that would be the female version of coding um, the, the sex. And you can see that body exposure here would be eight. So picture number one would be a one, um, picture number two, two. Um, and for example, picture number 12 would be a zero because there's basically no nudity in the picture. So um, um, within that, um, that would be a body exposure of eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I get it. Now. And she would get a 10, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's how it's coded. Some more questions or comments, of course. I'm also happy to hear comments and ideas and, um, yeah. Do we have other questions, comments? I really found it hard to believe that um, the prices were higher for male content. For me, well, that was um, rather shocking. I'm, um, I don't know how the rest feels or um, if that's expected, so to say. I was talking at one conference and um, there was like, yeah, we have a gender pay gap everywhere. Why shouldn't be it be different in social media? I somehow expected it to be different. <clears throat> Yeah, it's surprising to me too, I have to say. And, and this is uh, like the income levels proposed are how how are they where how are they where do they come from exactly? Um I that's from that's actually why the data from Pepsi.com was that interesting because they have this estimated cost per picture um for their they they actually supply that to companies right um since they want to advertise with those people and so you want to supply them with some information how much would that be if you want to have that influencer um work for you and i i uh, contacted them and asked how they calculate it and they say they have um real market data and they mix it then with estimations so they have that I find that very interesting because they also work with those influencers, so they know what they get paid, and then they kind of estimate in between if um, something else changes, they estimate the changes. And um, yeah, that's why you have this income proxy, and I think it's very difficult otherwise to get this information. Um, yeah, it's not publicly available otherwise, right? Do you think this is this might be affected by female Instagrammers asking it basically but for less than their male counterparts? I think this is like in different uh, contexts that you find that female workers are mm -hmm. like do, do less negotiation <clears throat> when it comes to wages, right? That could be the case. I mean, um, I oversampled female content within my sample just by picking the popular ones. So I can't really say that, that there might be effects due to that. And definitely, I think it's worth to look into it again and um, have some more research because that is exactly what could happen. Um, I can't really say anything about it. It would also be interesting to um, ask or yeah, talk to the um, agencies how they negotiate and uh, maybe there are differences in negotiation but I, I i'm afraid i can't say anything about that i mean well even if that was the case then you know once it becomes part of an algorithm that gets yeah and the yeah, results well, are sent true. to those yeah. firms and this is yeah. like their starting point in negotiations that, that yeah yeah that, then you're making the problem like 
automatic, yeah, yeah, like an automatic system. problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is very bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Any other co comments, questions? Well, if not, then, uh, well, thank you very much for the presentation. Yeah, thank and you for the interest and the invitation. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, thank you for questions. And hopefully we'll see each other during one of the next seminars or somewhere in person, perhaps. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.